Hi, I'm uh, Lockie Ferguson. Welcome to Machine Road YouTube. Uh, I'm here with my brother, big brother Mitch, of course, CEO of Machine Road. Welcome. Welcome, bro. Nice go, to have you here. Yeah. Uh, we thought we'd run through an interview of Mitchie, uh, get to know him a little bit more, uh, and then I guess a bit of your past, uh, working life, sports life, um, growing up with me, and, uh, and more importantly, how you got onto Machine Road. Um, so, without further ado, mate, we'll crack into a couple of fun questions that I've got lined up for you. Sounds good. So, have you ever sent an email to someone you shouldn't have, or a text? Um, yeah, unfortunately, it probably happens too much in my in my, uh, pro, in my professional life. Eh? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely been a few times uh, when it comes around to replying to, to customers where I actually send it to the wrong customer, and uh, you know, it tends to be the way Outlook works. So, yeah, oh, no. it's, it's a bit of a shame, but um, yeah, definitely from a text perspective. Um, I don't know what it is with phones these days, but I'm constantly texting the missus or the last person I talk to, so it's a shambles. Yeah, so all good. Uh, okay, so you're out on the town having a few drinks, perhaps. Are you a dancer or do you stand by the bar? Um, yeah, hundred percent a dancer. Right? A dancer. Yeah. He's a Fergie. He's a dancer. That's for sure. Love, love to cut some shapes, eh? For sure. Nice, bro. What is the one thing you refuse to share? Uh, the one thing I refuse to share. Um, Probably either a, a Heineken <laughs> or uh, or the remote control for the TVA. Yeah, oh, is that is, absolutely hates that. Uh, and last one, if animals could talk, which animal would be the rudest? I've probably got a feeling like it'd either be like dolphins. I see like dolphins. <laughs> I, I just feel that they're uh, you know super active and like Clean probably as it. close to humans as, as possible. So. Um, yeah, I feel like they have a lot of fun as well, so <laughs> definitely. Oh, fair enough. Well, um, sweet man. Uh, one last question I actually have for you, um, yep. more cricket related. Will you prefer speed or line and length? I've uh, never been much of a, a line and length fan, eh? I was, <laughs> I was always more of a fan of the old spray can. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So definitely Likewise. bowling as fast as we can and uh, oh, try, trying to get as many wickets as we can. So yeah, that's key. already a few similarities between the boys. <laughs> Um, awesome man, so let's touch, uh, obviously a lovely family at home, mm-hmm. um, you know, lovely wife Haley, of course, and a couple of boys, so yep. talk to me about what family life's been for you, it's been a pretty big change from maybe four or five years ago <laughs> to where you are now. Yeah, well it's a uh, massive change, so mum and dad, well, I couldn't believe it when I finally settled down and got married and actually have kids, but um, yeah, so we've got Haley, my wife, and um, Liam and Riley, so two the boys. two little ones, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely been an eye opener, but you know I've, I've found it really enjoyable, and and probably if anything, it's got me more focused over the last few years to, to really drive and, and kind of do well for the family. So yeah. it's been it's been really good. Settle down the big palooza and stuff. Yeah, unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so outside of work, yep. a few hobbies, of course. We live in New Zealand, great country to get out, out and about. Um, so you love a bit of fishing, a bit of golf. Yep. Yeah. Well, I don't really get to play golf. Not too there. much. Golf. Yeah. So I um, feel like kind of my time has uh, has, has paused, and, and this has put that on hold for a bit. It takes too much time. But, <laughs> two boys. Eh? Yeah. But yeah, definitely. Um, you know, getting out of the um, out of the boat, doing a bit of fishing, which is great, and uh, and you know, I, I just love being out in the wilderness. So whether it's kind of surfing, which I do a fair bit of as well, of course. Um, and then obviously just the the traditional kind of very much social football and cricket these days which is great oh yeah and a little shout out to the the Fakamanas of course Fakamana Express and fellow Fakamana player yeah yeah that was one hell of a team that one eh? that was a great team last man stands team right yeah Yeah. great win three days so yeah well done fellas so what you opening bowl for them have to be uh yeah yeah definitely definitely opening bowl for them eh um so yeah middle and then the slogger in the middle (laughs) yeah just (laughs) pinch hitter (laughs) pinch hitter yeah more appropriate way to put it um, oh sweet man, well, keeps you busy obviously, plenty of stuff going on, um, but yeah anyway we'll talk about, um, obviously we grew up in a pretty sporty family, uh, mm-hmm. both our parents very involved with sport, um, mum from the sideline, probably the loudest at the grounds, whether it be at your soccer game, soccer game or, or cricket game, Yep. Um, so and then dad coached us when we were young, so how was that growing up? Yeah, so I think, yeah, definitely, um, family's been a, a huge influence to, to kind of us getting involved with sport and, and obviously just kind of being there to support us kind of going through those those different levels of sport as well so yeah obviously 
like everyone and probably Auckland, let alone the whole of New Zealand, has probably heard Mum on the sidelines. <laughs> and, and Dad's been a great supporter as well, and and obviously kind of shared a lot of his his kind of success and the ways that he got to where he was within sport. Um, you know, and shared that with us. Pass it on to us. Pass it yeah. on. To, so that's been uh, yeah, that's been really good. And yeah. so um, and then obviously kind of our competition over yeah, the yeah. years is the is car- that, carport cricket. Yeah, we car- never had a backyard. We had a a carport concrete carport remember it had the ramp down so but used to bowl from about two meters or a meter and a half above bowl down and then if you could hit the down slope then it would shoot down under oh, well i think uh, we finally probably got to about 18 or 19 and i don't know whether it was probably i think you probably got to about 16 or 17 and, and bowling a bit of heat and i remember we used to tape up one side of the ball yeah the old swing ball and uh you swung two in and, and it hit me in some unpleasant places and, <laughs> and that was about the last time that we played cricket so uh my love yeah. for him swing bowling yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's where it all started obviously go we used to have some proper test matches out the so, back yeah. there though so yeah but it was yeah it was i yeah. always remember we were never out didn't matter which one of us it was we were never out yeah. oh, was, there was all sorts of tears of those test matches but good times totally. man yeah that was fantastic yeah so um yeah and then so you played Obviously, grew up. Dad was our coach, both sides. We played Pana Cricket Club, yep. um, Ellerslie football, and then I guess when you get to high school is probably when you sort of kick into sport a bit more seriously. Like, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So, um, so what did you play there at, at Grandma Auckland Grandma? What did you play? Yeah. So, like you say, Dad kind of helped us through the the youth side of it, and with like Ellerslie and a few of those clubs. Yeah. And then yeah, obviously entered into to high school and. Kind of got involved with a range of sport. I tried to play every sport possible just so I could get out of class and you know socialise with my mates. But the two main sports we really settled on was was cricket and football. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, kind of like started playing for those teams from like, from a pretty early age, which so was you made pretty good. First eleven at grammar at what age? What school year was it? So yeah, first eleven for football was when I was in fourth form. Yeah, and, that's pretty young, eh? Second and, year, and, and then I was yeah at first eleven for for cricket and the fifth, fifth form. form. So yeah, so yeah, it was it was good to get involved with those teams early. Like obviously, it forces you to grow up a bit more <laughs> and and you kind of get play pushed. with the bigger boys, eh? Yeah, well you get you get pushed and you kind of but you also learn a huge amount, which which was which was awesome and and kind of. Um, that's the big thing is you kind of meet mates that you've been been with for a lot for a long time. So From different ages. Yeah. What was your favourite soccer or cricket? That's really it's a real tough question. Like I definitely um, went further in football and, yeah. and really enjoyed the football sort of side of it. Um, you know, being a striker, like you're kind of always in the game and and the team kind of relies on you doing yeah. well and and so that was and we we were involved with a lot of national tournaments, which is always very exciting. Did you win a national tournament. Yeah, so so we've basically um, I'm even trying to think back a little bit now. Gosh, it's probably going ago, back, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, we definitely made a lot of finals. Um, like when it came to representative um, yeah, football, football. Well, even the representative side of it, we, yeah. we we kind of won that tournament as well. And um, so yeah, but but yeah, it's, it's it's a bit of a tough one to think back on that that, that, that long far. ago. But yeah, it was, we're definitely in the mix the majority of the time, which was which was cool. And uh, yeah, and obviously the cricket sort of side of it. I love. I it. always found when I was playing soccer, I couldn't wait for cricket season. Yeah. And then when I was playing cricket, I couldn't wait for soccer season. It was just like that classic grass. Grass is always greener, but it hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was always the way. Um, but you always like carrying injuries from both seasons. Yeah, so I like, know. <laughs> different body parts hurt, especially with fast bowling. Oh god. So, uh, but yeah, cricket. Cricket was always a huge passion of mine, and yeah. Um, not much of a spectator sport for some people nah. but like but definitely kind of getting that ball in your hand and, and really getting getting stuck into some of the some of the top Auckland players like with the yeah. your age group was awesome one of the great so. fields as well Auckland grammar down below right next to the prison on one side of it <laughs> and then the huge rock wall on the other side one of the great places to play career I actually absolutely fell in love down there oh, always remember the lunches as well grandma cricket so used good. to have lunch provided every time it was <laughs> unbelievable but that was a yeah, good time nah, it's a great school to be at so you played cricket for grandma first eleven. Nasty Farsi with a huge reputation still precedes you. Um, it's actually how I got picked up, or almost at grammar where I was training in the third net, so not even the top net for my age group. And uh, one of the teachers spotted my last name, saw me bowling quite quick in the net, said, "Oh, are you Mitchell Ferguson's younger brother?" And I was like, 
uh, yeah, and then they say, wow, come and train in the first net. And that's literally how I started playing number one team. And then I, of course, went into the first eleven reasonably early like you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if, if it hadn't been for Mitchy, I probably would have never been a cricketer. So how about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, well, it's very nice. But yeah. uh, I hardly re- think that that's the reason. You started bowling fast. But um, yeah, it was, it was always nice to be known for someone who could... Uh, not only better other teams, but also like make sure your friends are awake when they're in the cricket nets. <laughs> Actually, tell that tell that gag that you used to make uh, a bit of cash off the of boys and yet net sessions. Yeah, well, there was there was definitely a lot of chat. Eh? A lot of people like to be honest, I had never really had any idea where the ball was going. Yeah, so, like it was a bit, a bit hard for me to commit to like any regular payments. But um, but there was definitely a lot of. A lot of talk around trying to give me some lunch money to like ensure that uh, I didn't bowl bounces some of the nets. So that was always <laughs> always a nice thing to, to kind of hear. So that was good. Oh, that's classic. Well, so then you played first 11. Injuries. Classic thing for fast bowlers, particularly at that age, bowling quick. I'm sure all our viewers are wondering what kind of injuries you had. I know I went through my fair share of niggles and things. My body just wasn't prepared. Yep. Uh, what did you have? Uh, yeah. What, 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 what did what, I didn't have? <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, again, like, probably not not overly looking after my well-being and my strength, strengthening through that stage and just really trying to bowl as fast as I can. Well, you don't know it, right? You don't know. Well, that's exactly right. And and probably, um, you yeah, know, I wasn't a great listener back in those days either. But, yeah, definitely, uh, like every fast bowler, had, had a pretty bad back injury, which which ended up putting me out for a few years, and, and that just causes uh, a lot of other injuries. What was the injury? So it was a cool they called spondylolisthesis, which uh, basically the two lumbar vertebrae slip like crack on both sides oh. and slip out five mil. So um, yes, yeah, so that caused you know a lot of injuries from like obviously tearing your gluteus maximus off the bone and all, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> no, he just brushed over there. He tore his glute off his bone. <laughs> so yes, yeah, and still played a football season. Yeah, still played a football <laughs> season. Hey, let's go. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, so yeah, no, there's there's definitely a few there, but uh, and how was that mentally like? I know certainly I had a stress fracture when I was in my last year at grammar, and mentally, um, you don't think about not having trust in your body at that stage because you're just no. you're a teenager running around just playing sport. You don't really think about having to lift weights or get strong. You don't even know like that information wasn't passed on to me. I, I know it certainly wasn't passed on to you at that stage. No. So you know mentally, how did you come to a bit or? Yeah, it did. Well, I think the, the hardest part is probably like, you know, not operating at 100% yeah. like, all the time. And, and, you know, even when you try to put everything into it, like the body yeah. just doesn't really want to uh, keep up with, with kind of, what, you know, what, what you're mentally trying to do. And I think that's always a challenge, you know, especially you don't want to like, let the teammates down and let your mates down. And, and then again, like when you keep playing on an injury and you don't realise you've got an injury, yeah. like that just makes it worse. So, um, yeah. yeah, so it's yeah, a bit, bit gutting. Um, kind of like love cricket plenty but got told I had to, to stop there and, and you know those are the decisions you have to make to ensure that, that you kind of heal up in the right ways well, what was your action like? Uh, I know what it was like but tell our, view, tell our viewers what it was like yeah not traditional uh, <laughs> but pull but, the chain but, but, yeah but, but very slingy and used like, to be like <laughs> used to be like proper used to coil yourself up and then like calm around in fact mine was pretty similar at that stage too yeah. until I actually learned to go like up and over but yeah it was, I wasn't a massively tall fella so you like imagine the talk yeah. on your back and stuff Jesus. yeah so uh, yeah yeah well there, there we go Danny Morris Danny Ma- coach us Danny Ma- <laughs> <laughs> you would yeah. be proud um, and yeah so uh yeah, and then so, okay, so grandma cricket, and then sort of left, went into uni, yep. um, played sports, probably more soccer at that stage, right? And then studied? Yeah, so, well, kind of Educated came, man? Yeah, well, kind of came, <laughs> <laughs> kind of came out of school and you yeah, really didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we started off doing a bit of a civil engineering degree, which, which didn't really yeah, like, go anywhere, and... Um, yeah, then got into a bit of building and then yeah. finally settled doing basically a, uh, a degree in commerce, majoring in finance, finance and international yeah. business. So um, that was really cool. I, I guess the driver behind that was, was seeing mum where she was yeah. um, involved with kind of IT and yeah. travelling all over the place. So yeah, so yeah that, was, that was looked pretty exciting to me. To work in IT and stuff? Yeah. Well, not necessarily. I know, not she's not got necessarily these trips, eh? And she always <laughs> send us. I remember she worked for Microsoft and quite high up there and she used to go on these trips and be like oh do you guys know the the black eyed black eyed peas I think <laughs> yeah. and be like what yeah oh we just were at their show at Microsoft's event they've just had black eyed peas here we're like what 
Yeah, so I've actually been lucky enough to go to a couple of those events. Yeah, you've gone there now. Yeah, I had like I was like felt that close to Lenny Kravitz. Really? Yeah, That's cool, man. And so uh, they do it big over there. They do, yeah. So that was uh, yeah, Microsoft definitely know how to do it properly. Hard. Um, oh, sweet. And then so and then now you obviously work in IT. Um, don't have to go into too much detail, but what kind of area in IT are you working in now? Yeah, so so I guess probably coming from business, um, you know, I've probably been in IT for about ten years. Um, kind of found my way into to software development and, and kind of get involved with a lot of enterprise clients to, to help out, you know, in regards to building applications yeah, and, yeah. and web services and that sort of stuff as well. And, and really just because it was an exciting place um, that I thought there was a, a huge amount of opportunity in it and it was, you know, there's a lot of exciting businesses coming out at that sort of stage. So so you've seen the growth. And well, right. How many years have you been there? Yeah, so so probably in IT for about ten years now, and then yeah, so probably in software development for over five. Wow. So um, so yeah, it's a lot's even changed since I started. Which I uh, and and yeah, so it's, it's good stuff. Uh, well, without further ado, I guess that kind of leads on to um, Machine Road. Yeah. So you're the brains behind it. I'm just merely the pretty face. That's a worry. <laughs> but how did Machine Road? Um, you've always been quite entrepreneurial with your thought process and, and wanting to start your own kind of business. Um, mm. Certainly sports related for the most part, I think it's been with a lot of your um, thoughts. Yep. Uh, how did Machine Road come about? First of all, how did we come up with the name Machine Road? Yeah, well, it's a, that's, it's a really, uh, so we want to start with, with come up with the name. How did you come up with the name? Yeah, so I guess the core cool thing there is I kind of wanted to think about something different, something that kind of didn't limit us in regards to what, what we were doing yeah. but but something that also reflected very much what we wanted to do in, in the cricketing space in particular so so around the machine sort of side of it was was definitely like a machine as an organization to try and help help people around uh, ar- around us and around the community yeah also kind of using some of the smarts through like machine, machine learning, learning and, yeah. and a- yeah. ai as well and then and then the road sort of side of it came through, you know, a, l- a lot of our passion is around like guiding and taking people on a bit of a journey, totally. which roads tend to lead lead you yeah. on that sort of direction. Yeah. But also, you know, just a good old cr- good cricket pitch cricket in the road, road as well. Yeah. yeah. So there's a few different different <laughs> angles sure. there, but um, but yeah, it was just something a bit different. I thought something that was that was quite cool and um, nah, so kind of ran with it. I remember yeah, when yeah. you first told me the name. I was like, that sounds that's, <laughs> that's proper. That so yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so, well then so. You had these ideas, great ideas. Came up, with, well, you didn't come up with the name straight away. You, of course, came up with the idea. Yep. And so, so from your point of view, yep. I know our viewers um, certainly have probably used the app and, and keen to hear how you came up with the idea and and what your direction was and what you want to achieve with uh, this software, this application going forward for athletes of all sorts. Yeah, well, I think um, you know, again, it probably goes back to to kind of when I was playing a lot of youth sport and, and obviously yeah. I don't have to go on to the issues that you kind of face we kind of covered that off but um, I guess the big thing is you know just ensuring that the pe- kids around there and the youth and, and also the cricketing community just kind of has the support or the people they can lean on Yeah. Um, to not only like help them through like challenging times and like through their, through their careers whether yeah. it's in sport or you know yeah. um, but but also, you know, just helping to provide the information that they need to, to ensure that their bodies are, are kind of like fit and healthy and, and ready to go. And then also on the other side is, is you know, basically we kind of see a lot of kids out there or a, um, a lot of people out there sometimes miss out on opportunities for different slip reasons. Slip through the cracks, eh? It's the classic sport, yeah. so it slips through the cracks. So like how, how, how can we kind of like start getting some, some really clear insights around how they're performing and, and what makes them so great so that we can help promote them and, and, and help them kind of really achieve their dreams? Well, it's so. kind of like that. I know we talked earlier about the, the high school coach, right, seeing my name. And then exactly. I could have quite easily been perhaps one of the guys who slipped through the cracks because... I was in the third net and you know the one coach at one time may have not rated me and then all of a sudden I'm taken away from the game of cricket and so certainly I feel like from your and you're super passionate about eliminating that so that if you're a good talent or if you're a hard worker and it doesn't matter if you develop at a young age or quite a lot of professional athletes develop at an older age and so maybe we are missing out on some athletes missing out on the older age who develop in their early 20s yeah uh and with machine road you know like that certainly when you talk to me about it you, you want to kind of even the playing field and, and actually put some insights and numbers next to people and also give them a platform i guess to promote themselves yeah exactly and i think 
you know, it, it, it's pretty obvious in New Zealand in particular, but especially around the world that, you know, that youth adoption is, yeah. is dropping off, especially um, when it comes to, to kids getting engaged with, with cricket in particular, yeah. and even like a wider range of sports, like within secondary school. All those stats you were talking about the other <coughs> week, um, Cricket World Cup, Black Caps, did very well. But almost, <laughs> almost got there, Josh. Let's not talk about that. Yeah, we won't bring that up. Yeah, That'll take us forever. It. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> we had something like the the most views for a sports match. This, it was some stat like most sports, most views well, for a sports basically. match, and then drop off twenty percent. Yeah. So basically, the big thing was is that like actually increased thirty seven percent while the World Cup was on, which is which that's is, crazy. Which is that's really, crazy numbers. You know, in regards to viewership, I guess probably one of the big things has been. The, the drop off from like 2010 when there was like 18,000 kids that were involved with secondary cricket yeah and that dropped off to about 10,000 in really in 2017 um, and it's that's almost actually yeah so it's, it's it's pretty scary and so like a lot of what we're trying to achieve is you know trying to bring a, bring a, bring a bit of fun back into the game totally. um, trying to trying to find new ways to get kids engaged new ways for kids to play cricket and kind yeah. of work with with the right type of organisations to achieve that, um, and and yeah, like obviously, kind of getting those insights, kind of as is, is, is a core component of also helping the yeah. development of, of the youth coming through these days. Because I know you certainly talk about these sort of, I guess, two sides to machine row. There's the the guys who want to have fun, play cricket, the fucking um, and yep. the, the classic ones where. Um, they're down at the pub and having conversations about how quick Colin to ground home bowls and they yeah. think that they can bowl as fast as him and saying, oh, I can bowl 130 and then now they kind of have the actual software to say they only bowl 100Ks. Exactly. And then there's also, you know, like, we talk a lot about players slipping through the cracks but also because we live on our phones now, we want to allow people to train, get, get themselves better, right? And yeah, well, I think the, the core thing is, sorry, <coughs> Is basically um, kind of that balance between technology and actual activity. Yeah. When you're out there, kind of ensuring that your you not only your physical health but your mental health is 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 yeah. is, is good and and um, and kind of very okay in that sort of sense. So I think. You know, it's it, it's a good little balance um, yeah. between that and and again, you know, a lot of what we're trying to do is is trying to build up that sort of platform that will allow kind of the community to, to absorb have and, fun playing and have cricket fun. again. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a fair point, and I think <laughs> there's a, a lot of people who are still training by themselves in the nets. There's a lot of people who train with their mates in the nets and still love playing cricket. And if we can encourage, I guess, those guys to play more. Yep. Um, then you know, and then also, how great's the, the international leaderboard? Let's just touch on that. Yeah, well, so that what do you think you're going to rank up on that? Yeah, well, out of our mates, out of our mates, obviously, probably bar me and my cricket friends, you and your boys, you. Know, I, I think I'll still you take them. I think I'll Tilsey? Still, you think you take Tilsey? Yeah, well, don't even get me started on Tilsey. But yeah, uh, I, I, I think I'd still, I think I'd still be up there. Enough, eh? Enough. Why do you reckon you're clocking there? I don't know, it depends on what I want to put my back out for the week, eh? Uh, oh, we'll have to we'll wait and see. see. Maybe yeah. we'll come back and <laughs> check in with Mitch a little bit later and see on the, the old international leader where he tracks with that. <laughs> um, oh, that's great, man. Uh, and so, going forward, Machine Road, at this stage, our platform is um, very much getting people in the nets. Let's yep. get them measuring speed. Let's give them insights on, you know, how many balls they put in good length. That pitch mat we... You know, we sort of have in the application, comparing training on training, giving them things to work on. What are, do you have any hints of where it might go? Or obviously, we're touching on the top of the iceberg there, but um, where do you think maybe with uh, is their coaching going to come into? Yeah, well, I think I, I think the big thing for us is you know um, it's it's going to be vital to to take a lot of knowledge from from pro athletes that have been there and done that and gone through the um, through the yeah. system. Obviously, I've kind of learnt things from a lot higher level than yeah. anyone has kind of you know anyone has knowledge from, yeah. from the from the wider cricketing community. So, I think yeah, there's some exciting times ahead. I think um, like you could definitely expect some some components where where there'll be a, a mixture of kind of that knowledge base from pro athletes you kind of being shared through to give a little hint that maybe athletes <laughs> might get on the app and provide their knowledge 
two players. Well, yeah, d- definitely potential for that. Definitely some smart ways in doing that. Do you um, a little Lockie Ferguson how to bowl a little bit quicker, or a Mitch Ferguson how to bowl? Well, quicker? I don't think they'll want any lessons <laughs> from me to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, definitely from people who know what they're doing. Yeah. Then uh, I think um, I think that's vital in regards to what we're going to offer, and um, you know, it's a vital part of of what. what what kind of um, youth us. need this day these days, and, and kind of what drives them to, to go to the next level as well? Because uh, certainly from my point of view, coming through the levels, the information that I was getting as as a fast bowler, and I think it, it's quite a key one. We're we're trying to reduce injuries amongst fast bowlers whilst also having good time doing it. But I had to learn myself um, what gym program I had to do, and I know it changes for different players. But I had to learn myself like what gym, how much weight I needed to be lifting, what stretching I needed to be doing, how much running I needed to be doing, what kind of uh, fitness I actually sort of um, capacity I needed to be in. And I learned that over time and time and time. And of course, everyone's going to have to learn that. But I mean, for sure, the way you talk about it, you kind of want to spread that process up because it's not a secret. Like this, no. the knowledge I have from playing a, a bit as a professional athlete isn't a secret. Like if people ask me, what do you do in the gym? I'll tell them like, it's not hidden. Well, I think for you in particular, like we know you're always a big unit when you're a kid. But, yeah, yeah. But obviously Don't be like- kind. I was, I was reasonably chubby. Actually, <laughs> the guy showed me a photo of my second year professional. I think I was weighing it at like 96 kgs. And I thought I was fit and strong. <laughs> and I saw a photo the other day and I looked at it and I was like, oh, bro. I was wearing like a singlet. <laughs> I was a shocker. I was supposed to be a professional athlete. Anyway, we all, we but, all take time. But I know. think also like you had the right people around you who kind of understood your body understood what you know pace bowlers obviously the the amount of stress on your lower back if you had a lot of weight up high yeah like the importance of your core and your uh and your legs as well so i think i'll give you a crazy stat actually on that (coughs) so i didn't know this had a um gps unit put in to work out how much force goes through my body uh fast bowlers around nine to ten so if you're running in bowling quick nine to ten times your body weight goes through your front leg and your brace position and mine was 13 so wow. that was my like wake up call because if I was a kg or two kgs over, then all of a sudden twenty six kg weight, hey? every time, bang bang bang. And so I was wondering why I was getting all these injuries, niggles and stuff. But that's a lot of weight compared to a lot of different sports. That kind of force doesn't go through. Oh. And like obviously in a very unnatural, especially like my action, like mm. I sort of bank over and you'd think my side would be tearing every time but you know your body does adjust to it exactly yeah. um, but that kind of information I have you have because I've passed it on to you other players in our group have but certainly like a young I went to Auckland Grammar and did some you know mucked around in the nets really with them did some coaching and just checked in to see them but they don't have the information not because of any other reason but there's no way for them to obtain it unless they directly ask me and I sort of manually have to exactly, tell them yeah so um so there's some cool stuff i think that there's a lot of well there's definitely smarter options and smarter ways of delivering that sort of information which yeah. is, is, is exciting times so. yeah oh that's perfect yeah. oh well, man is uh, i don't know if there's anything further you want to add yeah or well, so yeah and no, i i guess like i guess at this stage probably everyone would have given a bit of a nudge and we would have got some, yeah. some really great feedback and i think that is probably the most vital thing is you know, this is this isn't us creating something that we feel is uh, is what you need. It's it's very vital that that we kind of get that feedback. That we we're right. very keen to work with the community to uh, to obviously kind of take the feedback, kind of look at the application, look at how it how it can be useful, how we can you know provide more information, how we can help to engage and network between different people. Because they might have ideas of other things they want exactly. to see, right? That we we haven't probably thought about exactly so so we're going to be running like obviously uh, a lot of events kind of around new zealand and and you know eventually globally which we which would be time. great um in regards to to really getting people down there kind hopefully of in talking Kolkata to, as well sometime yeah. soon shout out Kolkata yeah. Riders. definitely that'll be gold can't <laughs> yeah. wait to get over there. yeah yeah definitely. <laughs> but yeah so i think that is a vital part and and we're you know, when we talk about the community, we, we generally mean we want to we want to stay engaged, and, and we also want to you know eventually help you know the, the people within the community or yeah. the youth trying to get where they are um, as quickly as they can. So um, there will definitely be opportunities and and, uh, and and some cool things that can can happen in the near That's future. That's gonna happen. Sweet. Sweet. Well, just on that, if you do have any feedback, um, obviously. We're in early stages with the application and, and our development of the software, but if you have any feedback or you want to contact us, it's a direct line to Mitch and myself. 
Hmm. Um, or you can comment below under these videos. Um, but I'm sure there'll be plenty more videos coming up. So we'll be sure to bring up some of the, the cool ideas that some of our um, viewers have about the app and where they think it might be going. Yep. Um, but we're pretty excited. I know I certainly am as a, as a fast bowler, but also... Um, getting to a stage in my career where I'm quite keen to pass on knowledge and um, give back to the younger coming yeah. through and the potential next version of Lockie maybe who wants to bowl quicker than me um, but uh, once again thanks 100%. very much for your time bro it's been awesome yeah no problem and yeah. it's all very at best and we'll all catch the... you very soon yep sounds good all mate. good guys thanks very yeah. much thanks for joining us cheers cheers bye